Market to Market is everywhere you are. Subscribe to Market to Market on YouTube, find us on the PBS video app to stream on demand, and add our three podcasts on your favorite podcasting app. If I could just have a tiny bit of the energy that our guest today on the MTOM Show podcast has, I'm pretty sure I'd accomplish a whole heck of a lot more. Uh, Amanda Nig is in South Dakota. She's someone who's visited on our podcast before back in July of 2020. At that time, her family was coming out of a fire that destroyed their home, and she was kind of at a crossroads. She had just started a fitness side to her life, and now it has exploded. We're going to talk about her fitness business, but also the journey that she has been on and hopes that many of you, and thanks many of you, that have joined her on that journey. We talk about physical health, how it helps mental health. And in these long, dark days of January and February, this might be just the podcast you need to brighten things up and get you through the day and maybe inspire you to do a couple of activities for maybe 10, 15 minutes and how it could change your life. Yes, I do mean what I say when I have that uh, said to you. I'm Paul Yeager. This is the MTOM Show podcast, which is a production of Iowa PBS. And this episode, we really would like it if you subscribe to the podcast, if you share it with a friend that you think somebody that might need it or want to hear it or might be interested to hear it. We come with you uh, to you each Tuesday with a new episode, whether it's in audio form or in video form on our YouTube channel. If you have any feedback for me, hit me up at paul.yeager at iowapbs.org. Now, Amanda Nig, you know her as Farm Fit Mama. Oh, Amanda, I don't even know how you keep track of life because keeping up with you online, and I'm not trying to say I can like competitively keep up with you because I can't, but you wear me out just in everything that you post. Do you ever sleep? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I do. Actually, this year, I've been really strict about my mental health, um, mainly my sleeping, because sleeping is so many amazing benefits. Um, and I actually covered that today over a pod call that I do with my one on one coaching clients. And so this year, when I sat down and did my own goals, um, I was going to I put down working on my own sleeping habits. So. so what, you'll go from two to four hours of sleep a night? I'm hoping six. <laughs> really? Okay. Well, that is that is important. You just kind of covered a lot of the stuff I want to get to. We last talked to you, well, we first were introduced with you about, you know, the house fire. And then we kind of talked about how life had gone. And at that point, you said things were going well. But were they really? When we last talked, I mean, it, it, it seems from from what I gather, things have improved again, but you had to have a little bit of a realization. Yeah, I mean, no, they were going good. I mean, it, I, to be honest, you can't really prepare yourself to losing it completely how like a complete house, um, you know, and especially during a pandemic, it was just a lot was happening all at once. And so, I mean, I was in a good state when I did do that interview with you. Um, but a lot has changed since then too. Uh, but we are still dealing with insurance, unfortunately. Um, hopefully that's going to be wrapping up here soon. Um, so we can officially close that chapter and move forward. But yeah, I mean, no, I, I'm pretty, I've been pretty level headed with the experience, not to say I haven't struggled. I mean, there's definitely been points where, um, you know, you go to reach for something and you're like, oh yeah, I don't have that anymore. Or... <laughs> Oh yeah, that that was in the house. Like yeah. that's I don't have that anymore. So Well, okay. So when we talked, you had just started this thing. In fact, I should have pulled up my numbers on you before we even started. Uh this whole farm fit mama thing was goodness gravy. There we go. You were, you know, a couple of thousand followers. I look at now, you're approaching 35,000. How did that happen? I don't know. <laughs> uh I guess I just um I honestly don't know I don't the social media is a beast in itself let's just I mean in every platform is 100% different 
And with me, like I'm a, I'm a fitness online coach. Like my business is a hundred percent online. And so I did, I think the last time we talked, it was prior to, I did a huge apprenticeship prior to launching my own business where it taught me the ins and out behind the scenes stuff of like how to run a business, how to run an online business um, and all that. And they did teach strategy and they also she also taught about like how to market yourself online um, and attract the right people. And so, I mean, the biggest thing with any online or anything you do online is it's all about marketing and how you present yourself, uh, but also being real. Like I'm a farmer's wife. I love fitness inside and out. I'm a boy mom. And, you know, it's just like, you see what you get. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not somebody else online. That's who I am online as well. And I think people love that connection. They love um, feeling like you're that person that's their next door neighbor instead of someone where it's like, gosh, I could never be her or I could never be that. You know, we all know those type of people. And so it's just being real and being um, transparent with your audience as well. And that, that ties into my business as well. Um, when I launched my fitness business, that was the number one thing I wanted to do was to be an impact in ag um, and to be able to bridge that gap between physical and mental health, because it's something that I had to go through just a year prior. So it was, it meant a lot to me to be that outlet, but also when I needed a group of people to come to us, it, it was ag. I mean, we had amazing people that started a GoFundMe page for us, you know, that I've met a couple of times. It's so it's just like that community rallied behind me and it's, I wanted to be, I, I and, and it's not that I want to be, um, I am, I'm rallying behind that community and helping them with their mental health and physical health. Help. You, health. I think we're still working off the farm when we last talked, you were still yeah. taking some hours. So that's all done. Yes, I did. I, as much as I loved insurance, I did. I loved it. <laughs> Uh, I closed that chapter. No, it's just, it was, it was, you know, it was 11 years of my life. Um, and you know, I don't, I don't want to toot my horn. You know, I, I, I finished number one in the company, you know, like I was top dog. I climbed that hill and it's just like, it lost its fizzle for me. I love the aspect of protecting families and I love the opportunities and the relationships I built. Uh, but when, it was just, it was time. It was time for something to go after something I was extremely passionate about. It was time for me to grow and get outside my comfort zone. Um, and that's what farm fit training was. It was me pushing my own boundaries and seeing what I was capable of. Well, okay. So let's, we, we closed the insurance chapter. You also opened up another chapter that you were just in your last answer that I need to follow up on. Cause we need to kind of oh. <laughs> some update some things. So oh, <laughs> when you said you went to a class, how did that come about to help you in the business side of things? Well, it's, it's crazy. Okay. So you know how sometimes like every things online, you're just like, is this like legit or are they going to just take my money and run? And, um, you know, I was at that point where I was going through my certifications to be a personal trainer and nutrition coach. And I knew that I had no clue on how to run a fitness online business at all, um, yet alone market myself correctly. And so one day I, and I, as, as cliche as this sound, I totally prayed about it. And I know that sounds so cliche and you're like, oh, okay. But it, truly I did. I prayed about it. I got online and I landed on this gal's page named Sam Davis, who is now actually a business partner with me. And, um, I landed on her page and I messaged her and she had like 50,000 followers, you know, and it was just like, oh, this chick's never going to message me back. And she messaged me back and she's like, I have one spot open for my apprenticeship. It's three months long. Um, are you interested? And so we got on the phone and next thing you know, I was in her apprenticeship with 10 other people, nine other people, 10, including me. And it was just, it was a lot. I, I'll be honest, and Louis can contest to this. Uh, my husband's a saint. It it was a lot happening. Like there was a, like I'm 34 years old. I went back to school. It was just like your brain is not in that mindset of oh I need to study. <laughs> so that was that was a learning curve. But yeah, it was definitely worth it, and I would do it 100 times again. 
Okay, so you're you're talking about an apprenticeship, a, a small class. You're talking ten. So yep. if I'm watching this and in, in this discussion, or I'm thinking about some type of change in my life dramatically, uh, would you have felt comfortable in a large setting at say the community college or the, the the college or the extension or university had a program? Would you have felt comfortable, and do you think you would have had the same success had you gone to a a, a bigger place than just you and 10 others? No. No, I wouldn't. You know, like, it was like when I was getting my certifications for personal trainer and nutrition coach. Like, do they honestly know who I was? No. They took you just thought mind. they would cash your check and yeah, move on and cashed, you never hear from they them they again. they cashed me check and threw books at me and told me when I was testing. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing. It's all about that personal relationship. And that's what actually I built into Firm Fit Training is that personal connection. You know, this last two years, um, everything's gone online and people lose that connection. They lose that, that personal connection. And I don't think I would have, I, I I'm positive. I wouldn't have dropped the cash for one. And for two, I don't think I would have been as successful because it really gave me an opportunity to get out of my own comfort zone so that I could grow through the process and be ready. So when I did launch my program for the first time in February, which is coming up in a year, I'm not even a year. Um, in February, I could be ready to take on 25 clients, which I did. I've had a full roster right out the gate um, and be able to be present for them. So absolutely not. I don't think I would have dropped the cash or done it. We'll get to your 25 in a moment. I want to go back now to you just said um, the, the work that you had and, and the group that you had and the importance of the connection. But I, I want to now ask you, if I'm someone who's watching this or listening to this, tell me why I should take that jump or at least scenarios about how I should reevaluate things in my own life. Not necessarily saying I have to do everything you've done but just to make sure that I'm being true to myself as a, as a person. Why can't you do everything I've done? Um, that's a beautiful part, you know, is the biggest thing with anybody and including myself included is you can't grow when you're in your comfort zone. You can't grow as an individual. You can't grow as a mother. You can't grow as a husband. You can't grow as a spouse. I mean, you just, you can't grow. And if you want to grow and find your true potential, you're going to have to get outside of your comfort zone. And, and that's what I preach to my clients all the time as well. Like I'm not, yes, I'm here to be your cheerleader and encourage you on, but I'm going to push you. I'm going to push you outside that comfort zone because that's how we're going to work on your mental health and help you grow. And I can't tell you like last night, we actually, I did a huge mass webinar with my legacy. My legacy is my online class, um, my online gym class. Uh, basically, once you go through my one-on-one -on -one coaching, you can go into that. I know we'll circle back to that, but um, my legacy, I did this huge webinar last night, um, biggest turnout. And we talked about the why, like, why, why are you wanting a change in your life? Like, why are you wanting to do this? Why are you wanting to figure out a system that is sustainable and it's a lifestyle? So it just, it ties back into, you know, being outside your comfort, comfort, comfort zone um, and pushing your own boundaries. And it took me 34 years to get to that point of where I was like, nope, I'm ready. Like, let's do this. Like, I literally um, was at that point and sad to say, like me and my husband talk about it all the time is like, I don't think I would have launched my fitness business if our house burnt down, didn't burn down. Like really as, as crazy as that sounds, I know like anybody watching this is going to be like, what? Um, I was comfortable. I was comfortable. I had a career that I was freaking amazing at. Um, I had, I had the big old house, the two handsome little dudes that were wild and crazy. And that's my job to keep them alive, but they were healthy and, um, an outstanding husband, you know? And so it's just like, I had it all. Like I, there was no need for me to push myself outside that comfort zone. And when it took something that dramatic to get me to be like, okay, wait, is this really what I want? Is this really the impact that I want to make? Or is there something more like can I go for that dream that I always wanted to do, but I never did because I was comfortable? Um, and that's what ultimately really pushed me outside my comfort zone. But why grow? I mean, you say, that, help me grow. And, and you say you're comfortable. I'm comfortable. Why, 
Why sometimes do we have to be uncomfortable to make things better if we feel comfortable? Because why wouldn't you want to grow? Like, why would you want to stay still? Like, why wouldn't you want to grow as a human in, um, rediscover yourself or push your own boundaries? Like if, if you don't grow, then you're, my grandpa always said this and I always think about it. Um, he was 88 years old, um, and still working. He owned his own cement plant, um, and still working, still driving trucks, still going in and moving, um, rocks and, you know, loading tractors and, um, they always ask him, they're like, why didn't you retire? You know, Charlie, why didn't you retire? And he goes, the day I retire is the day I grow old. And it's just like comfort zone. You sit there and don't do anything. You're, you're going old. You're not re learning. You're not, um, you know, life has so much to offer. It has so many, like, we don't know it all. And I'm not going to be the one to tell you, I know everything about fitness. Like I'm already in my next certification course that is kicking my butt, you know, but that's the cool thing about it is it's just like, there's always opportunity to grow and be a better person and to be more knowledgeable in your space and what your occupation is. So why wouldn't you like, seriously, think about it. Like, why wouldn't you want to grow? So, well, it's just like, uh, <laughs> it's, it's just like knowledge. I mean, some people maybe physically, emotionally, you know, really scared of that, but intellectually we, that's if you don't want to dip your toe into those other two things, but at least the education side of things, right? Learn something different, whether it's Louie on the farm uh, or anybody else. Maybe they should look at a new way of doing something they've done since grandpa did it. Maybe it's time to look at something different, even though we know it's been working. I mean, it can apply to anything, right? Yeah. Like, well, I told Louie and he laughed at me and I, I was dead serious. I told Louie that I want to learn how to run the grain site this fall or not this fall, but you know, this spring, like I totally want to take on that beast. And he, he's like, well, that would help me out a lot. And he's like, are you serious? You want to learn? And I'm like, yeah, I can do it. I totally could run that thing like a boss. And so it's just like, again, getting out of my comfort zone, like him and I are a partner. Like I'm, I'm on the paperwork for half this farm. So, you know, I would love to get to know and dive into it and be more hands-on, especially where it's just him right now. Um, and so, yeah, I totally back to something new. Like, is it outside my comfort zone? Nah, probably not. But is it something that I'm totally going to love? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You said there was 25 people in your first class. Who were those 25? How'd you find them? Um, well, to be honest, like I did a challenge. So, um, back in, you know, last year when we talked, I did a couple online challenges. I had a huge turnout that were all free that kind of launched me into my fitness direction. And then, um, in January, I did another free challenge, if I remember right. And I was like, okay, from this free challenge, I'm going to start talking about my one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, and to be honest, like I set a goal of 25 people and I honestly, like I, I was determined to hit it. Like, I was like, if I have to interview 40 people, like I'm going to freaking hit it. Um, and my mentor at the time was like, okay, you need to set your, your expectations a little lower. She's like, I've been in the fitness industry for eight years. Like, you know, if you get six clients in the first six months, you're doing great. And I'm like, nope. I'm going for 25 and I'm going to hit it. And literally it was, it was amazing. I had 60 applications. I opened up, opened the shop and, um, 60 applications. And I went through every single one. I interviewed every single one. I did get down to 25. Um, I actually will do a post about it on February 5th. Uh, my first client and my last client who my last client, um, I just hired on as a coach. How cool is that? Um, so the coaches that I have are girls that came out of my first launch, my first um, launch of my fitness business. So it's really cool to even say that like farm wives on a mission, I guess we could say I would take farmers, but you guys are so busy. Like nobody wants to teach fitness a, a guy, <laughs> but, but it, it, no, that's let's stop you there because it's not just a male female thing. Uh, I mean, because there's, there's this side of a, a, a thought in agriculture of it's just men doing this and doing that. And they're not supposed to do those other things. Why is it important that a man needs to be physically fit and active 
uh, for both an emotional and uh, physical well-being? Well, when you tackle your fitness health, you tackle your mental health, like they're the same thing. Like when you take time to show yourself that me time, um, for, for one, I can't even tell you the benefits on what it does to your body, but for two, I mean, you're, you're affecting your mood, you're affecting your posture, you're affecting how you do things. Um, it, it's just a whole entire circle. Like Louis, I'll be honest, Louis just started working out with me. I've been a fitness coach since February and he finally, and I made him pay full price for the record. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. And he's in the app and he has to go in the app and check in. He can't talk to me about fitness without in the app. Like we, we keep that separate. <laughs> Today was kind of like, Rah! but um, <laughs> it's just like, you know, working on your, your, your physical health, you, you, you're tackling your mental health and it doesn't have to be long. Like that's the whole point of my workouts. They're 15 to 25 minutes, you know, they're quick killers, but you're doing something for yourself. You know, and a lot of people forget that. Yes, we're, you know, farmers, for example, you know, people in ag and you get so busy with running the farm and moving stuff. And then you you let your mental health or your physical health go downhill. And the next thing you know, now you're having health problems and now all of a sudden your mindset's down and, you know, in suicidal rate, I don't want to talk about it, but it's super high among agriculture, anybody in ag. And so that's the whole point of why in one of the major reasons I launched my fitness business is just, I want to bridge that. I want to be that outlet for people to apply, you know, and be like, okay, I can work out 15 minutes a day. I can show myself 15 minutes wham, bam, done, move on the day, you know? Um, and it's really cool. Cause like I said, my husband, who is not a workout person at all, <laughs> not at all. Um, only in the summer when he's on the lake. Yeah, I, I guess he does. He does. He's a barefoot skiing fiend during the summer, but like, yeah, he kind of goes into hibernate nation mode, <laughs> like for the rest of the year. <laughs> well, that's only like two months a, a year where you're at, right. For water skiing. Yeah. Maybe exactly. three. Maybe three. I mean, <laughs> three might be chipping some ice. I'm just kidding. Uh, we've danced a little bit around uh, mental health, and my bosses are always wanting me to. Really, all of us in our building, uh, whatever, uh, what type of uh, product that we produce, or television-wise, that they think everybody is impacted by uh, mental health. And we've done a couple of market-to-market -market shows on the topic. Um, you talk about suicide rates and, you know, what's, the, what's the state of mental health and agriculture right now? I mean, it's, it's easy to say it's, it's sad or hard or bad. Is it? Yeah, it's scary. I mean, I haven't looked at the recent studies of it and I probably should. Um, but when I, when it, before I launched my business, it was like high, like we're, Ag as a community had the highest suicidal rates out of the whole entire nation. Like, and we're talking other business industries, you know, and you really think about it. We're like, we're the biggest gamblers on the face of the earth. We really are, you know, our, like your job can change from one day to the next, you know, crops can be destroyed. And next thing you know, you have no crop, you know, it's just, it's high stress. And that's one of the things that a lot of, like, I have a lot of men in my challenge right now, and I love it. I free and love it because of the fact that it's like I get the opportunity to help them with, you know, stress. You know, stress is actually the leading cause of suicidal. It's also the leading cause of gaining weight. Um, medical, uh, it leads, I can't even tell you, stress is like your, your catalyst into rolling into all bad things. Um, and we all have it. We all have it. We live in a stressful um, occupation and it, it's there. You know, um, you stress about, hey, like, is the crops going to be good? I have to haul grain. How's the markets doing? I mean, it, it's never ending. And so um, being able to manage that properly um, and instead of um, going the alternative route is huge. Uh, like, I can't even tell you how huge that is. Um, I've had multiple women and men. Um, I've had men, um, come to me and tell me like, and then again, I'm not trying to chew my horn, but like really when we worked on their, their fitness wise, for example, which is, um, your wise statement, I have a post coming out today about it. It's super powerful. It's not just your fitness why it's your, like your life. Why 
And, um, you know, in that, uh, you get very vulnerable and you very, you open up because that's when you know you're on the right track. And I can't tell you how many people like have come to me crying after they wrote their why, um, and just ruling how far realizing how far they've came from when they started my program to where they're at now. And again, I'm not trying to brag about, about my business, but it's just like, nobody takes the time to work on that. Like you can push all these numbers, like, Hey, here's a hotline, call this, you know, or if you're having suicidal doubts, call this, or, um, instead of like giving people numbers and stuff, why don't you go out there and impact them and give them an, a space to, um, work on that. And that's what I'm doing. I'm giving them a space to be able to work on their mental health and to work on their mental health through physical health. And it's not me handing you a number and saying, call this and talk to a person that you've never met in your life. It's me having them come to you, come to me and be like, I'm going to get to know you inside and out. We're going to be best friends and you're going to like it or not, because you're going to be a part of this tribe. And then two, like I, like I said, I have two amazing coaches that I hired on that have been in the exact same shoes as people applying. They went through my program as clients. Um, and so it's really cool where they can relate um, and they can connect with people and be like, I've been there, you know? So um, yeah, it's just really cool to be able to, and I, I so cool around, but it's, it's, I'm honored to be able to be that source, um, you know, instead of being like, oh, here, I'm going to hand you a number or I'm going to shoot facts at your statistics or bore you down with all this information of why you should call this number because you're feeling this way. No, I'm going to help you address it, um, face it head on. And then we're going to take those next action steps to get you in a better place where you don't have those feelings and that you become a stronger version of yourself. And by doing that through physical health, we're going to rediscover who you are as an individual. Okay. So it's a little easier to sometimes talk to a stranger and open up because they know nothing about you, but yeah. Is yeah. it more effective to talk to the neighbor or someone that you know because I mean it's really hard to go walk down or drive down to the in the pickup to go, you know, hi, what'd you sell corn at yesterday? Okay. And you know, I've been struggling with, you know, I'm in a pretty dark place right. I mean, how do you start that conversation if someone hasn't asked me? Adrienne DeSutter was a, a guest a couple of times on this podcast, and, and she just at, says the simple thing, just ask somebody how they're doing. No, really, how are you doing? How do I find someone to help me if they're not going to ask me what's going on? That's the thing. A lot of people, yeah, we can ask somebody how they're doing, but do, like it's different when you just ask them versus caring. You know, you can ask someone how they're doing and everybody can give you that fluff answer, you know, and put on a facade and be like, I'm doing great. And then deep down, they're like, I'm freaking losing my, excuse my French, you know? And so it's just You're like, the first time I'm going to have to actually beep something on this. Podcast. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, no filter, but you know, um, you know, it, it's, it's different, like showing compassion in, in, you know, and with that being said, it's, it's a relationship. Like you have to, people are not going to open up to you if you don't open up to them, you know, showing that you care, like you actually care, um, is a different than just asking someone, Hey, how are you doing? You know, instead of being like, Hey, you know, I was struggling last week or share something vulnerable about yourself, then more than likely somebody else will open up about themselves. Um, you know, it's, it's back to like what we were talking about online, you know, being real and being open yourself. Like when I, I've shared my why with all my people and I can't even tell you, I've cried. I bawled through my why I'm crying now. And so it's just like, you know, that's the thing is like, people are not going to open up to you if you don't take the opportunity to open up to them. I'm writing down something that Making you just said. I, well, yeah. And I, and I might have to make that the, uh, at the uh, 27 minute mark, I made a man to cry. Bleep, to you're going to beat me. And now I'm crying. Like what is going on here? Paul? Market <laughs> to market has changed dramatically. It's all about tears ah! now. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and blocking out cuss words. <laughs> right. We're in the middle. And one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you now in January and in February, those are long days on the farm. And I had a boss a couple of executive producers ago that used to say the phone would ring a lot in January and February from farmers who just needed somebody to talk to or yeah. they just wanted to talk. 
So help me get through some of these dark days. Uh, you're, you're telling me that I know it's not a magic answer, but let's start step one. Let's get 15 minutes in of some physical work. Yeah. Like do something different. Like, you know, these are long days. Now's a great time to um, create a new habit, you know, and whatever that habit can be. And it could be something like um, another thing I covered last night on the webinar is a kiss. And basically what that stands for is keep it simple, stupid um, or silly, if you want to go that route. But it's, it's not the S word we had to beep. Yeah. No, no, this is a <laughs> one. Um, but it goes down to just creating a new habit, maybe drinking a gallon of water. I can't tell you how much hydration does to the body. Uh, mentally, it rehydrates your brain. Um, there's so many physical benefits that helps you with joints. Um, I mean, the list goes on. And so just picking up a new habit that you can do, like you have two months, start small, don't overwhelm yourself. And that's another big thing is like a lot of people will jump in and go all in. And then next thing you know, they're like, overwhelmed, frustrated. And then they're like, Nope, I'm done. And it's like, okay, ease into it. And that's what I do with my clients too, is you need to ease into stuff for it to stick. It's a lifestyle. So if you're wanting to do a gallon of water a day, or if you're wanting to move your body more, um, you know, find there's tons of stuff on YouTube. Everybody knows they're on YouTube. Yeah. I'm eventually going to be on YouTube. I will get that beast tackled, but you know, um, that's something too, like, you know, you could do quick 15 minute workouts and, um, or you could, um, you know, download some yoga or do something for yourself. And that's the biggest thing here too, is, um, you know, you have the time, the days are long, like, why don't you break it up and create a new habit? And again, that's Louie just started. My husband just started like literally in January, January 1st, <laughs> you know? And so even him, I mean, it's, you know, creating a new habit sometimes can be frustrating, but don't try to do it all at once. And don't have a wife like me who is like, you're doing wrong form and <laughs> standing over you. It's not, is he doing wrong? Form. Is he doing the wrong form? There was a few times. Yeah. yeah. Now we're going to have to really tell him to listen to this. Cause you know, uh, I know. Uh, I think he's outside the door actually. Oh I don't yeah. Know. He's probably wondering what on earth. Uh, okay. As we, uh, get close to the end here. You said something about going to be on YouTube eventually. You had like a production company or something following you this year. You were shooting some serious big league photos and video. What's that all about? I can't give it out yet. Okay. Will, so that's a will, something that's coming. I will, huh? I will tell you, Paul, um, March is going to be huge. Um, I have a huge collaboration. Um, I'm getting sponsored by somebody and um, I had the amazing opportunity to create a fitness program um, with these in group or company that in ag. Yes, it is an ag. I'll tell you that. Um, and I am super excited and honored and humbled. And so that was part of the production crew coming out, recording. Um, it was for that campaign coming up. And then in addition, it was for my YouTube launch. So um, I am going to do YouTube. I, I haven't quite figured the reason why I haven't launched it is to be honest, I don't know what I want to go into. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm a busy person. I'm a, I'm a fitness coach. Um, I'm going to be more hands-on on the farm, you know, operating the grain site. Um, I love cooking. So, I mean, I could go into cooking. I mean, there's just so many things I can cover on my YouTube channel. It's like, I don't want someone coming in and being like, what is this chick about? <laughs> like, you got to have some kind of direction. So, um, but the production crew was mainly for this launch in March and it's going to, it's going to be great. It's going to be epic. And I'm excited is the understatement. <laughs> Well, it sounds like it. And that's, uh, would you have thought two years ago that, that this would be happening? No, no. I, I mean, wouldn't. you dream big. You talk like, yeah. I'm guessing you dream big. I mean, so you probably deep down were like, I could be a big deal. I, don't, I, I mean, I just have higher, um, expectations in myself. I guess you could say it if I said that we're right, but, um, you know, the sky's the limit. Like why put a cap on yourself? Like why put a cap on your potential and what you can do? Um, and I've always been that type of person. Like I've never wanted to be that person where I, I couldn't achieve something because somebody, and then if you tell me I can't achieve it, achieve it, I'll go do it just to spite you. Like that's just my personality. Like 
I, I've always been that person where it's like, you know, anything's possible. You just need to figure it out and take the time to make it happen. Um, and that's the thing with fitness journeys too, is like a lot of people expect these like amazing results right out the gate. But if you do your fitness journey correctly, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Um, and that's how you find those lifestyle changes and something that's going to stick. You know, there's tons of like quick fixes and don't get me started on diet culture and, you know, and don't, you know, and all that fun stuff. Like a pill is not going to be, you know, yes, you can join keto and lose all this weight, but I bet you in the moment you start taking carbs in, you're going to gain it all back because your body doesn't know what to do about it. So it's just, there is healthy ways to go about, um, you know, journey, vision, business, everything, you know, just put a realistic title or a realistic, um, goal for yourself, but also shoot the moon. Why not? You know, you can have but, realistic and shoot the moon at the same time. Nothing wrong with that. High expectations oh. are good. Yeah, that's great. fine. We need to expect more of each other, lot, not less. Uh, As we you. march into 2022, you've kind of teased a little bit. Watch out in March. Um, what else? What's next after those? That big thing. Um. Well, I actually have two businesses. So I have my Farm Fit Mama, which is my one-on-one coaching um and all that and then i coupled up with my mentor on it's called farm fit digital um and that's where we launched this challenge under that campaign in march is going to be launched under that so they're two separate businesses actually um but i mean what's next is i the goal for me is i want to hire more coaches i want to make a bigger impact um i also not only want to hire more coaches i want to create a system where I can train people, um, farm wives, just like me, I can give them the guidance to build their own fitness program and their own fitness endeavor. Like, I just want to really expand both ways, you know, not only with my coaching side of things and hiring coaches and hiring, um, you know, making a big impact. I want to also, if you're not going to come in my program and not go through it, let's help set you up so you can go be a fitness coach and make an impact in your area as well. Um, so that was kind of my vision on both of those is I want to just be that impact. That's like, very biblical right there. You're not just giving me fish. You're teaching me how to fish. Yeah. I love it. I love yeah. teaching. It's, yeah. you know, and that that's being able to explain the why behind everything. I just love it. And I've had a lot of women actually farm wives come and ask me like how I got started. And that's kind of where the ideal of wanting to, go on to the teaching side of things and actually teach them how I did it um, and give them the keys and be like, okay, you can do this. I'm going to help guide you. So I basically become their mentor is kind of the, how that would work. But you have a different off the farm job. That's for certain. It's kind of, that is, to you. yes, it, it is. And I have my first public speaking event. That's exciting too. <laughs> you just be Montana. you. And I, th I think, Oh, in Montana, you're going to be just fine. Yeah, I know. But when I think of Montana, who doesn't think of Yellowstone? <laughs> That's all the rage. Well, we could get into another oh. debate about that, but uh, we'll save that for another time when we visit again in the future. Absolutely. I all appreciate right. you. Amanda, thank you so very much. I appreciate it. And uh, I hope 2022 continues uh, some more rainbows for you. Yeah, I appreciate you asking me and let me come on and tell my story. So sky's the limit. See what I mean when I say she's got a lot of energy? Thank you, Amanda Nig, for your time. Louie, I hope you got into the shop at some point that day. Thank you so much. Leave us any feedback at market to market at iowapbs.org. Thank you so very much, and we'll see you next time.